speaking to Moses they shall hearken to your voice and you shall come you and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt and you shall say unto him the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us now let us go God is confident he's saying they will hear your voice. The next chapter, verse 9. It shall come to pass if they will not believe also these. So the first time he's saying they will believe you. They will believe your voice. I'm sending you. They will believe your voice. Second time he's saying if they will not believe. Yeah. I want you to show them two signs. So, signs are for a believer that did not hear the voice in the first place. Are you getting me? God is coming to Moses and saying, Moses, I'm going to use you for the deliverance of the people and they will hear your voice. Okay? And then he's coming back to him and saying it shall come to pass if they will not believe these two signs. So he's saying I'm giving you two signs. And then he's saying neither hear unto your voice then thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land and the water which thou takes out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Okay. He's saying that if they don't listen to your voice and they don't listen to the two signs then I'm going to do a third sign okay now you go to the next chapter that's what I taught you a few days ago Moses spoke so unto the children of Israel whatever God said he told them but they heard not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. So there can be somebody that God assigns for your breakthrough and God sends that person into your life but you're not able to hear them because of the anguish of your spirit and because of the cruel bondages on your life. So it, it becomes a very dangerous dilemma. Jesus spoke about that to the disciples and he said, if you go to a village and they, did not, they do not accept you, let your peace return to you. In other words, when you enter into a village, the first thing you tell them is, peace be unto you. That is how angels greet. That's how angel was greeting people in the New Testament. So a child of God is functioning as an angel. Connect the dots, book of Revelation. Pastors were called as angels of the church. So you come and you are speaking shalom, the peace of God to a group of people, but they do not receive it. Jesus in the New Testament, not Old Testament, because some people have a way of making Old Testament look terrible and New Testament is Santa Claus Christianity. It's not true. You haven't, you haven't read properly. Jesus is saying, if these guys don't accept the grace that you carry, let your peace return to you. So there is an, a critical role that the messenger of the Lord plays on your life. There is a critical role. 
many ministers are not successful not because god did not make them successful it is because in trying to please everyone they cancel themselves of the grace that they were assigned to so they went not recognizing that now they became the channel of deliverance they became they 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 god is saying i am remembering you and the way i remember you is by sending moses to you the way i remember you is by sending moses to you if you don't understand this formula you're going to hurt yourself if you look at the eunuch that was reading from the book of isaiah the best major prophets that talked about jesus no other prophet in the old testament spoke about jesus more than isaiah he was the best the prophets had ever seen and yet this man was reading from that scripture and did not understand jesus so you will see some people say you don't need the man of god you don't need a church you just need the bible and yet the guy was reading the scriptures and could not see jesus yet jesus came to them and said you have been searching the scriptures not even reading searching it that means they are more diligent these guys are students of the scripture and yet you do not find me in them so critical loss was that they found the scriptures but they didn't find the man that god had chosen to bring them the scripture because you can find the scripture and suddenly you find the man anointed by the lord to bring you that scripture and immediately the scripture comes alive in another level and it wasn't that the scripture wasn't already there but go you connected yourself with a man sent by god look the problem with our generation is that the moment you hear a conversation in the church about a certain individual they begin to feel uncomfortable thinking it is idolize idolatry idolizing a, a a man well let me tell you when god uses somebody it is not just the strengths that he uses he uses their weakness to glorify himself in them so it may not just be the strengths of the man that he's using he's also using the weakness of the man so that in his weakness his strength is made manifest Amen. so if you are going to look for the most perfect prophet the most perfect man of god the most perfect perfect all the best we we when you find that perfect person let me know i'd also like to come and see him and if you find a perfect church don't join them because you're not perfect so an imperfect person joining a perfect church now that church stops becoming perfect because you are imperfect cornelius was a guy who would like you know have interactions with the angels and yet an angel came and said bro you're very very good but you still need peter to come send people and bring peter hi angel you you travel so many miles and kilometers you come all the way from heaven why don't you just tell me what peter is going to say why are you going to make me spend fuel send human resources and go search for a man that guy had to wait on that man the guy is going to come i have to pay for his hotel he is going to come and say come 7 o'clock you know he is going to make us wait we have to stand in the line we have to stand up and he comes why why all this religious stuff angel you've come all the way from the heaven talk to me no doesn't work so scripture guy who's reading scripture directly still needed philip to come guy meets an angel still needed peter to come okay how about somebody who meets jesus directly do you know of anybody who met jesus directly yeah you guys read the bible i'm so proud of you 
Saul met with Jesus directly face to face encounter with Jesus to the point where the moment he encountered Jesus he's never seen Jesus immediately he said who are you lord you're saying who are you but you're still calling him lord meaning you 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 are acting like you don't know who you are but you know who I am <laughs> he comes and says who are you lord so Jesus meets with somebody one on one and then Jesus said i'm leaving you now Okay, this is King Shai Ju worship. Uh, but for your healing to be completed, you have to go search for a guy. His name is Ananias. He will lay hands on you, and then your eyes will be healed. And he, the guy, you have to locate that guy. Saul, no matter you had direct encounter with Jesus, in order for your eyes to be open, I have still appointed a man to open your eyes. even after seeing jesus face to face you met with jesus and jesus said you still need to meet another man please don't let any man deceive you by saying that we don't want church don't want pastors we just have jesus directly that jesus appeared and said you need a man hey come on now the manner in which god does god speaks to a prophet god speaks to a prophet and then he tells the prophet write the letter to the angel of the church okay and then the angel of the church reads the letter and then comes to the church says i have the word of the lord from So imagine the context from God to the prophet prophet to the pastor pastor comes reads it to the letter but we don't want to follow that ah we want direct god is going to speak to me directly that is why you have still no breakthrough in your life i'm telling you tough word but i'm giving you help now the reason why you don't have help so far is that you have been too arrogant to submit to a human especially because you see 25 weaknesses in that human yet god said no that's the guy you need god says you don't like him well too bad for you he is the one you have to submit to ah god has a way of making us humble <laughs> I'm telling you God knows our pride issues so he'll give you somebody that can kill that pride for you so God has a way of bringing you that individual that was said this is the one this is the one because every other pastor you would have gotten away with it <laughs> every other pastor Ah you would have started bible study with for the pastor So God said you need this one this one yes yes locating that individual is locating your blessing <laughs> Locating that individual is locating your blessing You need to find it because you the more you stay in a place and you keep grumbling the more you reduce your life span spiritually. Come on. Your spiritual life span is reducing. So it's not good, it's not healthy. No pastor should threaten a believer that wants to leave. I've always said that you need to give them an offering so they can go in peace. Some bless you with their presence, some bless you greater with their absence. So it, that's not that's not an issue but the issue is have you located the one sent by the lord I don't care how anointed you are I don't care how anointed you are I don't care how great you are if you don't find somebody that you have not submitted to that means your spirit is now functioning through the spirit of antichrist I'm telling you this I'm telling you your spirit has not submitted to an individual Jesus submitted to an an individual that was inferior to him. 
Jesus submitted to a individual. Jesus went to John the Baptist. The moment John the Baptist saw Jesus, do you know what he said? He said, "Why are you coming to me? It's me who has to come to you." Meaning John the Baptist is now functioning as prophet Elijah. So he's prophetically looking at Jesus and he's saying, "This is not right. I am supposed to come to you, not the other way around." And Jesus said, "Let all righteousness be fulfilled." Fulfilled. Jesus is saying, "Do this. Let all righteousness be fulfilled." Wait a minute. I thought Jesus was the righteousness. If Jesus was the righteousness, what more was there to be fulfilled? Jesus is the righteousness. And yet he is coming and saying, "Let all righteousness be fulfilled." So the righteous lamb had more righteousness to be fulfilled? Aish. Ah, this is so exciting to me. When information comes to my spirit like that, then you cannot not submit anymore. You cannot not submit anymore. Jesus is saying, the righteous lamb is saying, let righteousness be fulfilled. In other words, saying Jesus being the righteous lamb, yet without submission, without submission, he will have a part of his life that there was no righteousness fulfilled. and that part of a life will be a loophole for satan to attack him that will be a window a stronghold a foothold the bible says do not give satan a a foothold so jesus not submitting to a man before he starts the ministry would become the foothold that satan can use against him Are you understanding what the Lord is speaking to you right now? Because Satan has a way of taking your sins and going to heaven because he is the accuser of the brethren. So if you see the spirit of accusation in the church, you know what spirit that is. When you hear somebody's broken story, that is not a gossip, that is a matter of crying. That is a matter of weeping. how can you call yourself a christian when all you do is to is celebrate a loss celebrate a failure of another person in the kingdom of god oh my goodness my goodness you're not a christian so prepare your heart and ask the lord lord have i aligned myself well to receive what you're sending have i aligned myself well to receive what you are sending have i aligned myself well there is an atmosphere of miracles i've said this before there is an atmosphere of miracles and the bible says jesus was not able to do any miracles among them because they felt that they knew jesus too much they felt they they be, they had become familiar with jesus they're like ah we know his mother we know his father we know his brothers isn't his brother still with us they became so familiar with jesus that the worst that he was not able to do any miracles among them except for a few that he laid hands upon okay In other words when Jesus would come there would be mass miracles happening things would happen without him laying hands things would happen just by him speaking but in that in that town it was so difficult for miracles to happen that he had to now he was forced to lay hands on some people to perform a miracle can you imagine Jesus speaking and nothing happening that's what the bible says because he spoke and he created the entire world but when there was unbelief in the heart of a believer he spoke and nothing happened what is it oh my goodness i don't know if i if if i'm helping somebody but i wish you talk to me if it is helping you what is this about this master of 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 the universe could speak and an entire universe would form but dishonor 
or lack of belief in the individual that was sent by God could no more produce the words that were supposed to produce. There is a moment where words do not work for you. There is a moment words do not work for you because you do not believe in the one sent by the Lord. That same words were used to make the universe around you but it won't work for you. But the same words were used to make the earth beneath you but it doesn't work for your house. That must stop today in the name of Jesus. And then there are moments when people would receive from Peter's shadow falling on them. Nothing more. Just his shadow. He didn't need to lay hands on them. He didn't need to pray and push them and make them fall down. Nothing, nothing, nothing. None of those stuff. He just passed by. They said, look, the man is very busy. I know that this is the way he goes to the, at four o'clock he comes here to have a coffee in this coffee shop. So four o'clock, where is the shadow going to be? The sun is going to be there. Okay, there, come on. Shadows are not everywhere. Have you seen a shadow? How can we Google shadow now? Talk to me. <laughs> Have you seen a shadow? Shadow has to be on the opposite side of the sun. So there was a group of people that studied the location where Peter is now going to pass through and they studied where the sun is going to be and they studied they, they discussed among themselves if he's going to come this way and the sun is on that side that means the shadow is going to fall this way so let's put all our sick people on this side of the road so when hey, come on don't think that miracles happen just by coincidence no there is intentionality there is preparation there is anticipation there is hunger there is honor there is respect come on it is time for your miracle yes they planned they studied their research. This is his entry point. This is his exit point. This is where the sun location is. This is how long the shadow will be. Hi. Hi. And then we read a verse like that and we miss out on that detail. Father, make us diligent students. Amen. Open your mouth and say, Lord, make me a diligent student of the Holy Spirit. You see, the moment you say that prayer, God is already aligning you with somebody that you need to sit under. Because when you hear diligent student of the Holy Spirit, it is not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit always uses a mouthpiece. He uses a donkey to talk. He uses a servant to talk. He uses a man of God to talk. He's always looking for somebody to talk. Ah, my goodness. May you locate that somebody in Jesus' name. Welcome. We are so glad for the grace of God that has visited you through this program. I believe that this word has liberated you, has opened your eyes, has given you a new passion and strength to pursue Jesus. And the good news is that you can hear the full sermon that is available on the Shaiju Matthew app, which is available both on iOS and Android. And thank you to all our financial partners that it is because of your generosity that we are able to reach this word to the nations. You can also connect with us on all our social media platforms. Until next time, God bless and Shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 